Hello everyone, it's Tim Spector here of the Zoe Symptom Study, giving you the update for this week. And it's actually good news. After uh, two and a half weeks where really nothing's much happened, been pretty flat, and people worried about schools, etc., the picture has changed and rates have started to drop again. So we've dropped down to about 4,100 cases a day. That's down 13% on last week. So I think we've turned that corner and I expect rates to continue to go down uh, s slower than they were a month ago, but definitely should now be dropping. The uh, picture shows that they're now um, uh, 66,000 cases of, of people with symptoms around in the country. So that now means your your chance of bumping into someone is one in a thousand for the UK. But of course, uh, that's not the only statistic that matters. Uh, the important one is deaths. And we've seen that drop by 35 percent in the last week. And uh, today's figure is just about 56 deaths, which uh, is uh, negligible compared to all the other uh, causes of death. Admissions are down to 289, uh, a drop of 22 percent. So that's also good news. And the number of people in NHS beds uh, across the country is between one and four percent. But what we are seeing is going back to the days of the summer where we saw a, a three, three to fourfold difference across the regions. And if we look at this uh, graph, you can see how we're seeing the prevalence uh, rates differing quite a lot between Scotland, Wales, the Northern England, with uh, London and uh, the South. And I think this is going to be interesting to see how this develops over time. And you can see the uh, effect of schools, which perhaps cause a small blip, but, but uh, nothing uh, marked. Of course, last week uh, I reported that the uh, virus was affecting sli more slightly the younger people aged under 19. We saw a slight increase there, sort of a get bucking the trend. But I'm pleased to say that hasn't continued and we're not seeing anything worrying now. And most of these age groups have stabilized, as you can see. And Particularly good news is that the rates in the over 60s are, are probably coming down even more clearly than uh, some of the other groups. And most of these are, people have now had uh, one vaccination. Now, internationally, um, a lot of talk about foreign travel. Should we ban it? It's, are we, it's inevitable we're going to get a third wave because of what's happening in France. But I'd just like to get our data into some international perspective. When you compare confirmed case rates across different countries per million, you do see a clear picture emerging. And while you can see that France is in big trouble and rates are still going up and they're currently uh, six or seven times the rate in this country, they didn't really have a second wave before. So maybe they're just having that wave now. And it doesn't inevitably mean that countries next to it have the same problem, because if we look at Spain, Spain mirrored uh, our changes and had a, a second wave when we did in this country and have similar low rates to ourselves. So I think we should be looking at uh, countries that have been vaccinated a month ahead of us, like Israel. And when you do that, uh, you get a much more optimistic picture. So nobody knows for certain, but I think let's not leap to conclusions just because uh, we take some countries out of context. Now, uh, back to vaccines. Um, we're nearly up to a million of you guys that have logged your vaccine with us. I think it is a million internationally now, uh, including the US and Sweden. And uh, we've had uh, many more of you getting your second doses. We're still looking at these side effects very, very carefully. And 
still not seeing any any problems with blood clots, which the Germans are worried about. The um, other side effects some of you asked us to look into was tinnitus, that's ringing in the ears. And we found that 19,000 people had reported uh, a ringing in the ears. And we looked at this in the data and it's quite low levels, uh, one to 2% in our data with a slight difference between the two vaccines. So 1% uh, in the Pfizer and 2% in the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine on the first dose, but uh, less on the second dose. So it's looking like this is a possible uh, rare side effect. Um, uh, we'll obviously keep an eye on that for you and learn more. But generally, the data we, we showed you before is still holding after one dose uh, we're seeing and 30 days afterwards, uh, you're seeing about a 74% protection relative to people who uh, aren't being infected. So your, your, your chances, particularly when the rates are low, uh, are, are even lower. And uh, this, is, this is great news. Uh, obviously, nationally, we're up to 30 million people have had one dose. And so that's uh, explain why uh, things are getting much better. And no sign really of any of these other variants uh, interrupting that, that particular problem. The, the other way we, we look at um, whether rare variants, uh, th these new ones, Brazilian or South African, are taking over is to look at things like reinfections and whether people have had COVID previously are getting it again in bigger numbers. And we're keeping a look on that. And last month, there were only 31 uh, new uh, reinfections of people who had COVID earlier in the year. And uh, this is sort of big spec because many people had it nearly a year ago. Um, 134 people had a COVID infection after vaccination in the last week. And this is a considerable number. So don't forget that once you're having a vaccination, you're really not protected at all for the first two weeks. And then only partially until you get to that 74% figure at a month. And we have seen that there are now 2,200 of you who are in that category. And unfortunately, the symptoms of the vaccine uh, are, are also very similar to those of the virus. And that's a bit of a problem. So I think the summary there is we do need to get a test whenever you, you're feeling unwell. There's no clear way to say, oh, is this another, another infection? Am I getting reinfected? Or is this some uh, long effect of the vaccine? Just assume it is COVID and get a test. But overall, I think it's a, a reassuring picture and uh, I'm getting more confident we're going to uh, have a, a much more relaxed summer. So thank you for your support. Uh, do keep logging and stay safe.